Hi everyone, so today we're going to look at uh, another explanation of memory. So we're going to look at explanations of long-term memory, episodic and semantic memory, which was a theory proposed by Tolving, Tolving in 1972. Okay, so the main idea really behind this theory is that um, Tolving suggested that the mortar storm model on memory was too simplistic and more descriptive rather than explanatory. So he proposed um, that there are in fact two different types of long-term memory, which the multi-store model doesn't really delve into detail about. Okay, so he proposed two different types of long-term memory, whereas the multi-store model only proposed a one type. Okay, so he proposed there's an episodic memory, which is all about remembering our experiences and storing our personal events and situations, and then the semantic memory, which recalls um, and remembers facts, information that we have learnt. Okay, so we're going to have a look at both types of memories individually. Um, and obviously for your exam, you need to be able to describe both types of memory. So episodic memory first. So episodic memory is almost like um, taking a snapshot of a event which was personal to you in your life. So it's described as a mental diary and receives, uh, receives stored information about experiences and events. And they are autobiographical in nature. In other words, they're personally experienced events. So the birth of a baby, a wedding, um, a special birthday, etc. These kind of memories are episodic memories. And these memories are dependent on time referencing. So in other words, we do sort of link time. So we were this age when this happened or it was this month, etc. For example, you know, recalling your first day at school, you know, you would be able to remember, obviously, when it was, uh, etc. So the recall of episodic memory is also dependent on context in which the learning took place. So um, we are more likely to remember the context where that event took place because it's obviously so uh, personal to us that we we make more of a conscious effort to remember that memory. The input of episodic memory is um, continuous so we do experience a whole episode rather than a section of the memory so you know we'll remember the whole of our wedding day what happened from the start to the end rather than just a fragment or a section okay because it was obviously a personal experience we're more likely to remember the whole of the episode. Episodic memory also enables us to time travel and to almost relive past events that are from personal experience, which no other part of our memory does. Okay, uh, just an example really of a task to illustrate this. What I want you to do is just to pause and make a list of any events in your life which you think are part of your episodic memory. So think about key significant life events. And then also think about how much information you do remember about them. And it's very likely that you will remember quite a lot of detail about these events. Okay. Going on to semantic memory then. So semantic memory is a little bit like an encyclopedia and dictionary. So it stores facts, concepts, meanings and any knowledge that we have gained really throughout our lives, starting from, you know, nursery, primary school and going through school, high school, university education, etc. Um, just an example, obviously, things like we know that February comes after January. And that's a fact that we have learned early on when we were in reception primary school. OK, so that is part of our semantic memory. Now, semantic memory is detached from temporal link in other words we can still recall semantic information without any reference to time or context so remember if you think back to episodic memory it was more um, based on time and context however semantic memory is information we don't need cues from t from the time or context to remember it for example what is the capital of france 
You can obviously recall this information without remembering when and where you learned it. So it's obviously a part of our encyclopedia and of our mental encyclopedia. And we can remember this information without thinking, actually, I was sitting in a classroom in this lesson or, you know, I was watching a TV program. We don't need to remember how we learned it, but it does become an automatic semantic memory. The input of semantic memory is in a fragmentary way um, compared to episodic memory, which is remember we said it was a whole episode. So we can piece factual information together and then sort of put it under the same group or umbrella. For example, Britain and France declare war on Germany in 1939 as an event. And then Japan attacks Pearl Harbor in 41, where Hitler invaded Soviet Union. Now, these two events are separate events, but we can store them together as they both belong to the Second World War. So we are constantly learning and constantly adding to the information in our semantic memory. The semantic memory does contain immense collection okay, of material information that you have obviously learned throughout your life. So, you know, we're constantly updating it as we learn more and more each day. So really, just to summarise, this diagram shows that semantic memory is information that we have learned, that we have gained from our interactions, okay, through school, our interactions with others, etc. And episodic memory is our memory that we have of specific personal events. This summary table here really looks at the differences between semantic and episodic memory. So the nature of the memory first is obviously mental encyclopedia and then diary. Time referencing. Now semantic memory is independent of time referencing. So we can learn um, and recall regardless of time. Episodic memory, time and context do act as cues really to help us to remember episodic memory. <clears throat> Retrieval uh, is possible without learning in semantic memory, um, not cued recall. In episodic memory, retrieval using cues, so in other words, like clues in the environment, which are encoded at time of learning. So we, we are more likely to remember um, something if we are taken to that same context, for example. Are semantic and episodic memories related is a question. Semantic memory can operate by itself individually as we don't really need to remember that we were in a classroom where we learnt about Milgram and obedience. So it's semantic, it stores in our encyclopedia. Okay. However, episodic memory needs semantic memory to operate as we need to be able to draw on previous information that we have learned about objects, people and events. So really what Tolving suggested is that yes, the two systems do have some overlap, but they have been researched independently and separately. Further research. Um, so really the model doesn't just finish there. In 1985, um, Tolving did sort of decide to update his model by identifying a third type of long-term memory called procedural memory. Now, procedural memory was something that he added later to the model and it relates to our memory um, for actions, skills, and how we do things. For example, driving a car. Now, driving a car is a skill that needs practice so obviously we have driving lessons etc and after much practice we can obviously and years and years of driving we can change the gear without even realizing it so it becomes obviously unconscious so procedure memory really allows us to learn and to respond to the environment again things like riding a bike these are procedural skills learn to play learning to play a musical instrument all right Uh, there's some examples of some YouTube links here attached, which are great for examples of case studies. So Clive Waring, there's a documentary on there and a case study by KF, which we've mentioned in some of the previous uh, memory models. So these two are cases which will 
pop up a couple of times during cognitive approach so some links do have a make the time to have a look at these uh, links videos and going on to the evaluation of this model so some of the strengths now there are obviously many strengths so i'm going to go through only a few okay and then some weaknesses and then you can uh, have a look at some of the textbooks as well the as psychology for some additional points uh, start off with 1987 Ostergaard, a researcher, uh, looked at a case, a 10-year-old um, ten year old boy, case study, who suffered from brain damage, uh, who had impairment to semantic and episodic memory. He, he did recover and he did make progress um, educationally and was able to store information semantically in the end. So what the, you know, this study really shows is that there is evidence of separate stores of memory, which is what Torving was suggesting. The case studies, again, of Casey suffered from long-term memory impairment after a motorbike accident. Again, another famous case study, was unable to recall personal experiences, so episodic memory um, didn't really work. But his semantic memory, so his memory of information and his knowledge, uh, was still intact. Case of HM, Clive Waring, which I've attached links to, again, both difficulties recalling episodic memory, but they were still able to learn new skills, semantic information and knowledge. Problems. So a major problem with this theory is that... Um, the case studies were unique individuals with brain damage. Therefore, the researchers didn't really have the full information about these case studies. So there's a lack of control and lack of validity because, you know, we don't really have all of the information about them. And then again, generalizability is always a problem with case studies as well. This explanation is incomplete, however, as research on amnesia patients has shown that although they have damaged episodic memory, their semantic memory is still intact, okay? So again, this is a problem because, you know, further research really does need to be carried out on this model. It is difficult to test these stores independently, episodic and semantic, um, and then, although they do overlap, really, it's very difficult to test them independently when there is such a big overlap between the two models between the two types of memory, okay? So um, that's a summary of the model itself, okay? Episodic semantic memory. So go through that again yourselves and look at the description evaluations, okay? Thanks.